Hey, college coaches, this is Coach Anthony Williams, founder and CEO of Connected Athletics. We are a startup company based in Austin, Texas, and we're focused on helping student athletes successfully transition between high school, college, and then on to a career once their eligibility is over. Uh, we are specifically focused on helping student athletes during this uh, very interesting COVID-19 recruiting cycle that we're in since they can't be on campus because of the NCAA dead period. Uh, we want to give these uh, student athletes a chance to share their own story, tell their story, share their journey, and what their goals are in their own words so college coaches can see and hear uh, what they look like. Uh, we've got another exciting prospect with us, a quarterback. We haven't had a quarterback on the podcast uh, in a while. Uh, A.J. Abbott is a class of 21 quarterback from Stratford High School in the, in the Houston area. Got good size, 6'2", 205 pounds, great, strong GPA of 3.7. He already has a uh, SAT score of 2030, a 1230. Uh, he was first team all academic and honorable mention from his district. Uh, AJ, how you doing this afternoon? Doing all right, coach. How are you doing? Man, thank you for taking time out of your day. I'm doing great. I'm looking forward to hearing you tell your story. I've watched your video a lot. Uh, you made some really great plays. Your surprising athletic ability and, and speed and accuracy. I, I'm looking forward to coaches knowing more about you to help you uh, uh, get some more exposure in your recruiting process. Hey, let's just jump right in. The number one thing is you know that coaches care about the most in recruiting is your academics. You've got the strong GPA, you've got the strong SAT test score. Tell us in your own words about the, the importance that you put on your academics. Well, I mean, for me, especially, it's always come from my parents and it's kind of molded me into what I am and who I am. Uh, the focus is always school first because you go to school for eight hours of the day and you got football after school. And that's the order it's supposed to be in. Ah, big time. Yeah, I understand that. Hey, tell us, is there a certain, uh, do, you, is, do you have a favorite subject or subjects at school that kind of drive that GPA? Um, I love my science courses as well as um, uh, wildlife research. I'm trying to take as many okay. classes that revolve around that as I can. Okay. Are there any teachers at Stratford that you want to shout out that have helped you along the way, maybe make, fun, uh, make learning fun? Uh, is there a teacher, a counselor, an AP, or a coach you want to shout out right now? Uh, a bunch of the coaches that uh, also teach, shout out uh, Coach Reed, shout out Coach Ratana, uh, as well as Coach Boland. You know, I, I got to, you know, interact with those guys during the school day a lot more and got to get closer with them and then, you know, be able to, you know, jaw jack it up at practice after school. Good stuff. And then, uh, AJ, have you thought about, have you and your parents sat down and talked about what you might want to major in when you get to college? Uh, yes. So I was thinking uh, – as well as my dad, you know, he helps me go through all this because, you know, he's been through it all himself. Um, I was thinking a lot of uh, kinesiology, so that way I could stay close to the sport once I'm done, as well as um, wildlife sciences and uh, fishing sciences because uh, should everything football-wise fall through, which I hope it doesn't, obviously, um, I would be able to go into perhaps, you know, an outdoorsman field, which I, I'm a big outdoorsman. I love the outdoors. That's good to hear. There's a player that I helped uh, about six years ago, uh, went through, went to an Ivy League school, played football for four years, and he is now a uh, wildlife ranger. Uh, he works at one of the top national parks and he gets them involved in all that. So uh, maybe I need to hook you up with him after we get done here. But that, 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 that's an interesting uh, choice of background and, uh, and, and job and major. Uh, one thing, AJ, that college coaches want to know about their players is what their learning style is. Tell us, are you more of a verbal, visual or hands-on learning style? So I find myself sitting in between visual and hands-on just because I like being able to, you know, in football terms, put reps into something as yeah. well as being able to get shown and talk, like shown specifically what's going on. So board work and reps is pretty much the way I learn. Okay. Tell us one thing uh, that helps you drive your strong academics uh, that make a difference that could help somebody who doesn't have the kind of GPA and SAT score? What are things you've sacrificed to get those strong grades? Um, time. Time is, yeah. you know, something we all have to, you know, spend on certain things. We only get 24 hours in a day. Um, sad, I mean, sadly, but, you know, it comes around to you, you know, you can't go out and hang out with your friends on this day because you have tests the next day. You can't go out and hang out with your friends because you have a game the next day. And it's all just – understanding where and when to do what you need to do. What about, uh, you know, one thing I always tell athletes, it's kind of a joke, and you'll, you'll probably be very familiar with this, is what when you have friends that aren't student athletes, they ask you, hey, can you fill in the blank? Can you go to this party? You want to go hang out? 
There's usually one of three answers for every athlete. No, I have homework. No, I have practice. Or no, I have a game. <laughs> Is that true for you? Uh, pretty much. I usually surround myself with other football players, so we're all kind of on the same schedule. But those, yeah. those, those are my friends that don't. I mean, 100%. You know, as you go into your senior year here, what would you tell AJ yourself as a freshman uh, as a best practice that would help you manage the, those next three or four years uh, better now that you've been through the whole process? Don't stress so much early on in high school and don't be so easy on yourself later in high school because I feel like I got that mixed up. I felt like I was a lot, a lot more stressed out earlier on and then kind of like loosened up versus just being strong the whole way. And I feel like that's something that might've helped me out a little bit. No, oh, that's great advice. Let me also ask you, I see a lot of uh, sophomores and juniors who are in the recruiting process and they didn't quite take their freshman year academics as serious. Knowing, looking at your GPA, I, I, I would assume, but I want to hear from you. Did you take that freshman year serious and have good grades after your freshman year? So my freshman year, my parents wanted me to, you know, take it easy, go slow, and kind of work my way into harder classes. But uh, I personally decided to just take the hardest classes as I could, try to get a feel for it. And it did affect my GPA a little bit because I found certain areas that I just wasn't as strong in as I'd like to be. And obviously, I worked on that. But it, I did not really have the strongest of starts just because I was taking the hardest classes I possibly could, a bunch of other stuff. But uh, definitely put my head down and did 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 my due diligence on that. Well, you know, uh, obviously college is a lot harder in high school uh, from an academic standpoint. You know, there's lots of services available to student athletes to make sure they're successful. Tell these coaches, are, are, when you do struggle in a class, are you open uh, to, to getting help from some of the academic services that will be available to you on campus? Tell us a little bit about what you do in a class you struggle with. Of course. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, what was that last little part? Well, just, you know, tell, tell us a little bit about what you do. When you do struggle in a class, what kind of help do you, are you okay? Are you open to getting help or are you just going to push yourself through it? Um, a little bit of both because I try to obviously understand that this is like, this is a teacher's expertise. Who better to go to than the teacher or someone who's really, very well versed in it? So I feel like it's a combination of, hey, getting the correct information from the correct person and the correct guidance as well as, you know, just, you know, keep pushing forward and not, you know, just saying, oh, this class is too hard. I'm going to go take, you know, some blow off class. Gotcha. Okay. Good stuff. Uh, let's, let's transition to learning more about you personally, AJ. Uh, tell us a little bit about your family, your mom and dad, uh, what they do, uh, your siblings. Are you an only child? Are you the oldest, the youngest? Give us a little bit about your uh, background about your family. So I have uh, my mom, my dad, my, I have a stepdad and a stepmother. Uh, I'm the oldest of three. I have a younger sister, Olivia, who's 15, and a younger brother, Graham, who's six. Um, we've always been very specific on how we do things. It's always been a very, hey, do it right. I mean, it was a, something my dad and my, some of my old coaches used to say. It was always like, do it right, do it light, do it wrong, do it long. That's right, yeah. You know, if you're going to go take the trash out and you do a bad job of it, you're going to have to go back out there, open the trash can, yep. take all this other stuff. Versus if you go out there and do everything right the first time, you're done. You don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Well, it's funny. You bring that up. It's a great uh, learning lesson. When I was a kid, uh, I used to cut the lawn. And I, you know, I'd be in so, so much in a hurry to get my Saturday chores done, cut the grass so I can go play ball with my friends. And I remember one time literally sprinting with the lawnmower in front of me to get the job done. And my dad walked out and says, hey, fastest lawnmower job I've ever seen. But now you got to go back and do it over again because it's not done right. And I end up losing another 30 minutes or so before I can go play sports. So that, that's a great saying that, that helps all generations. Uh, tell us, you know, you mentioned you're the, old, the eldest uh, sibling. Tell us about the importance you put on being the best big brother you can be. Well, I mean, everybody kind of follows suit. And I've noticed it a little bit. My sister is going into her sophomore year of high school. I notice so much of her has changed, especially watching me go through high school that she's just like becoming more and more like me which is a little bit scary I'm not gonna lie to you because like I always see her as like you know my little sister like don't mess with her but like she'd probably kick my butt I'm not gonna lie um <laughs> same thing with my younger brother he started using like the kind of lingo that me and my sister use because you know we're always like messing around with each other and it's it's like it's kind of it's kind of weird to think about because especially with, I mean for me and my brother it's a like almost a 12 year age gap yeah so I it's like 
He's like he's a mini me, huh? Getting to, getting to witness your own childhood. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's good stuff. Hey, is your uh, your sister, who's a sophomore, is she uh, also a student athlete? Is she a volleyball player or anything yeah, or no? She, she's a very good volleyball player. She, okay. everybody, everybody jokes that she's a better athlete than me, and I, you know, take it a little bit personal, but it's all good. <laughs> okay, well, uh, once again, sh sh hey, shout her out. What's her name and what year and uh, what volleyball team, club team she played for? You might be a coach that knows a volleyball coach somewhere. Sure. Uh, Olivia Abbott, uh, class of 2023, I think. I think it's 23. Uh, mm -hmm. Strong High School. She plays for uh, AVA down in uh, the Clear Lake area. Outside hitter, server, uh, Labaro, what? Labaro. Okay, good for her. Okay, let's go shout her out. Hey, tell us also, thanks for that background in your family. Uh, tell us about when you're not working out and you're not working on your, you know, throwing and everything and playing football, what do you like doing in your spare time? Do you like to hunt or fish or hang out with your friends? What do you do in your spare time? I love hunting and fishing. Um, I've gotten to spend some time working on a extended family's ranch in Wyoming. And that's, you know, really taught me a lot, especially growing up and, you know, just going out there and working over the summer. Um, love, love driving. Drive, like my dad, my dad was a motorcycle racer, you know, when he was okay. younger. I, I was always around the sport, you know, motorsports in general. You know, driving is just, you know, something I feel like very comfortable and natural doing. I just love it. Okay. Uh, back to the hunting and fishing, uh, what was the last kill you had? What, what was it? How big was it? Man, last kill I had? Good Lord. We've just, we've just been prepping at our place for a while now. Um, might have been a hog, because we do a lot of population control with hogs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then what about fish? What's the largest largest fish you caught? Ooh, largest fish? That's a hard one. Um, I mean, I, I love wade fishing, so we do a lot of that. Uh, probably a 27-inch red drum. Wow. Okay. That's yeah. good stuff. Down in okay. Galveston. Yeah, that was fun. Good trip. AJ, are you uh, are you a video guy? Are you a Madden or 2K or Fortnite or Call of Duty guy or no? Uh, I'll, I'll play a little bit with my friends. Uh, sometimes a lot of Madden. I like to I like to get on NCAA 14 on my old Xbox though. That is okay. my jam. All right, good stuff. Hey, as coaches want to get to know you better, we get into the season here, and you're gonna have a great start to the season. What uh, social media apps can they can they track you on? Are you a Twitter guy, Instagram or no? Instagram and Twitter are my two like go tos. Okay. And then tell these coaches, you know, a lot about, you know, high school and college football is locker room chemistry. Uh, tell these coaches, what, what's your favorite music? What do you like to listen to uh, in pregame? Who are some of your favorite artists? So pregame, so I, I do like a spectrum of getting into it. So I can't just go from like, oh, we're sitting down eating team meal to like 100% because we still got three hours to go to go. Right. So I like to, I'll start with like country music, something relaxing, maybe like jazz. Mm -hmm. And then I'll move into something a little more like upbeat, like, you know, maybe classic rock, something like mm -hmm. that, I like hard rock. And then I'll move into like heavy metal-ish to okay. rap a little bit here and there. Yeah. Just kind of a, like a flow to it. I like that. No, that's first, first time I've heard that from a player. That actually makes sense. I like that a lot. Uh, tell us a little bit about... Um, you know, or, you know, we're trying to get you guys back into school here. I know you're virtual learning now, but when you do get back on campus, what's your shoe game looking like? Are you a big shoe guy or no? My shoe game, man. Um, on Fridays, we get to dress up for uh, for football. We'll get our, we right. have our team little polos and stuff. Most people like wear, you know, some Nike shoes or stuff. I'm a big cowboy boot guy. I, okay. My cowboy boot game is second to none. <laughs> oh, right. I like it. You're the first player that's mentioned that. I like he's the first one to mention cowboy boots. That, that's that's excellent. Uh, tell us a little bit about um, one of my favorite questions is you know what's your all time favorite football movie? Ooh, that's a that's a good one. Most recently, I watched Remember the Titans. My dad had never seen it, which I was like, oh, really? It was like two months ago, and my dad had never seen it. And it, but growing up, definitely the Blind Side. The Blind Side yeah. was just I thought that was it's just a classic, classic movie. Yeah, I yeah, know it is. Okay, I like it. Hey, I call this my uh, dream scenario question. Let's say you have four great years in college and you find yourself in New York City uh, at the NFL draft. Who is sitting with you at your table waiting for your name to be called by the commissioner? Um, best case scenario, my mom, my dad, and my grandparents. Okay. Just kidding. I mean, especially my granddad, because he's – He's probably had some of the biggest influence on me football-wise out of anybody in my family. Okay.
Did he used to play football, or what, what? What about your grandfather motivate you to play your best? So, uh, in this in the Stratford area, um, the name Tully, the last name Tully, is a really big deal. Our mm-hmm. home stadium is Tully Stadium. There's Tully Drive that goes like right, right. by the stadium. Um, my gramps was the first uh, team was on the first team that Coach Tully ever coached at Spring Branch High School first wow. year. Wow. Okay. And, That's good uh, stuff. Yeah. Sweet. Okay. Hey, uh, tell us, you know, when, when football, I always tell players, football will eventually come to an end one day. And I, I pray and my, 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 what drives me to help student athletes out is to make sure that they use football as an enabler for the best education they can get at zero debt. What's your life going to, what do you want your life to look like when, when your eligibility is all over? Whether you play a 10 year career in the NFL or you're done after college, what do you want your life to look like both professionally and personally? So professionally, I want to do something so I'm very, I'm very open and like, I enjoy most of the things I do. I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to work a job. I mean, obviously, you know, if, if I need to make ends meet, I'll work any job I need to for my family or whatever the case is, whatever my status is. But I, I try to find joy in everything I do. And I feel like, you know, whatever I am able to support my family with and, you know, have a genuine good time with, I feel like I'd be okay working just about anything. Okay. And, uh, Personally, getting out of football, um, I don't want to be some little kid. Because I know I'm, I, my dad's got some friends that are, you know, like 40-year-old kids, you know, joking around, <laughs> messing around. I mean, it's fun to be around them, but at, at the end of the day, you need to be a, like a man for your family. You, don't, you can't right. just be, you know, a 16-year-old stuck in a 45-year-old's body. True. So does that include you, you want a family one day, want to have a nice wife and kids settle down or you plan on being single and being a professional in your life or what? Uh, I, I plan on having a family one day. Okay, Definitely. good stuff. Okay. Hey, let's, uh, let's transition as we finish up here. Let's go into recruiting a little bit. Uh, I watched a video, very impressive. Uh, tell us, uh, you know, during this COVID-19 environment, what have you been doing to stay in shape as you prepare for the upcoming season? So um, our SAC, our, our strength and conditioning program, I say SAC, um, was shut down for maybe four weeks in the middle. And we've had, we've had intermittent workouts. I mean, a lot of my teammates will live in like an apartment complex and they have a gym. So there, I don't think there were very many beats missed. I mean, obviously like squat, squatting is hard to find, but I mean, um, I, I don't think much else has been missing a beat just cause you know, my teammates and I were always trying to find something to go do somebody's house to lift at somebody's, Somebody who, you know, knows where an open field is because, I mean, a lot of schools' fields got shut down because yeah. of corona. And um, the, our coaches have been great about talking to our district because uh, usually it goes Houston ISD and then Spring Branch is like the next one to pull the trigger if there's anything that needs to change. Um, the coaches have done a great job advocating for us to get back in the weight room and, you know, lift weights out. We, haven't, we even lifted weights outside for three, four weeks just so we could, you know, get weights in. Mm. It was it was great. What about timing with your receivers? Are you finding time to work on your, your lower body, your footwork, and throwing with them? Your timing? Uh, yes, sir. Um, so a lot of my receivers. I mean, we all live in like a five block stretch. You know, each street is you know twelve twelve kids live on it. I mean, I've got three receivers that live within walking distance of my house. We're always finding something to go do. We're always you know. I mean, everybody's sitting at home on the phone. Somebody will text the group chat, and everybody jumps on it, and we'll go have a seven-on-seven tournament, you know, offense versus defense, full scally. It's – it's, everybody Everybody on my team is very committed, and I feel like we're going to – it's going to turn out really well for us. Nice. Tell us, AJ, as you go into your senior year, what do you consider your strengths, and what are some of the things you're working on in your position as you move into your senior year? So, for me, I transferred in from a private school this past year. And um, playbook knowledge was one of the things that I needed to focus on. So I got thrown into the system and it was like kind of just trying to pick up stuff week by week. Uh, now, obviously putting the final touches on our playbook, you know, definitely need to work on stuff, look at film more often. I um, feel like one of my strengths is um, definitely the awareness of what's going on just in, on the field where everybody is at all times. I feel, I feel like I'm very comfortable with knowing where 22 people are, where a lot of people are comfortable where 11 people are. Good stuff. And what, what are some of the things, good, give us something you're working on. Uh, overall consistency and knowing that um, 
what's going on like with my body mechanically, what's going on in my head mentally, going through different checks and looking at who I need to look at and just understanding the progressions that I need to go to, as well as understanding where everybody's lined up pre-play because nine times out of 10, if you can figure out where everybody's going pre-play, you know where you're going with the ball. Yep, absolutely. Okay. Hey, college coach, you're always you know, concerned about uh, players and their relationship with their high school staff. Tell, tell these coaches a little bit about your relationship with your position coach and your head coach. Uh, they happen to be the same person. Um, okay. they're, uh, coach Rankin's an awesome dude. Um, I think he's only like really yelled at us twice and not in like a soft way and like a, Hey, this happened. I'm not going to make a big fuss about it, but Hey, we're going to fix whatever happened. If we don't fix it. We're going to find a solution. Like now solution now, or I'm going to make a solution. And so I feel like it was a lot of responsibility for me and the rest of the quarterback group because these coaches, they care so much about us learning and growing from things that they're not ready to just hit the panic button right away. They're, they're ready to see, Hey, what can we do? AJ, tell us, how do you define leadership and how do you plan on leading and going into your senior year? Uh, so leadership is really easy to talk about. Like it's easy to be like, Hey, I'm going to tell you what to do. I'm going to tell you how to do this, how to do that. I'm going to tell like the coaches, Hey, I'm, you know, checking on whatever player, but real action is what's leadership. Cause like, Everybody can tell somebody if they're doing something wrong, but you, you don't want to tell them. You want to show them. Okay. It's, hard, it's yeah. hard to point out. It's hard to point out. Oh, little Joey's running at 70% during sprints. Hey, we like, if you're not going hundred, if you're like, if you're going hundred, he has an example to look at. Yeah. You know, AJ, there's probably a freshman quarterback who wants to be in your spot in four years. Give that young freshman or give yourself as a freshman one piece of advice after playing four years of high school of, of what they should do to be successful as a student athlete going into their senior year. Be relentless. Don't, don't pedal to the metal the whole time. Don't step on the brake at all. I mean, there's no time for it. I mean, these four years for me have just flown by. There's not time for you to slow down and, you know, put the brakes on. You need to be boogieing the whole time. Okay. Good stuff. Hey, one thing I always have to ask student athletes, and it's a basic question, but college coach will ask me, you know, ask you, why do you think your game translates to the college level? You know, there's a lot of high school student athletes across the country that want to play in college. The, the numbers say only 8% are going to play football at the next level. Uh, tell us why your game, why your game is going to translate. Um, cause I feel like I have, I'm very growth set. So if you were to look at me freshman or sophomore year, you'd, you wouldn't think I, I would, I don't, I wouldn't think much of myself if I'm looking at my own film. Um, but I, I feel like I've grown and developed at, in my opinion, just an insane level. Like I feel like I'm maybe two or three times better than I was a year ago today. I feel like I've just grown more in my knowledge of the game and, you know, my consistency overall with controlling my body and understanding just where to be, how to be and how to act. Okay. Hey, you got good size. You're obviously a good athlete. You got good speed. What other sports did you play during your four-year high school career? So, growing up, my mom wouldn't let me play football, and so I played a lot of soccer. I played. Uh, I did swim and water polo, and that was probably some of the most fun I've had outside of football. Wow. Okay. Good stuff. Hey, uh, as, we, as we finish up here, uh, you know, one thing that's important as you make the transition to college is your coachability. What style of coaching do you prefer? Do you mind a coach kind of challenging you, getting in your face and yelling at you to, to play better? Or do you prefer, hey, talk to me like a man, tell me what I need to do and I'll go do it? Which one are you? I feel like I enjoy a healthy balance of both. Okay. Because there are times when, you know, you need to tear somebody a new one. And I mean, right. coaches know, I mean, I'm obviously not going to be like, hey, it's not a good time to be yelling. Coaches know when and where. I mean, they've been doing this a lot longer than I have, obviously. Um, but at the same time, there is a point when it you need to, like, step up as a player and you need to have a man-to-man -man conversation with your coach about what's going on and what you're seeing. Yeah. Or, else, you know, or else if you act like a kid and they're in a yelling stage and they're yelling at you and you go act like a child, nothing's getting done. You're getting into a bad mood, showing bad body language around your teammates. It's just not a good situation. Yeah, absolutely agree with that. Hey, as we finish up here, tell, you know, uh, coaches always care about the competitive nature of their student athletes. 
tell these coach, college coaches uh, a little bit of background about how competitive you are as a player? Um, I hate losing. There's not a thing in the world I hate more. I, I don't think. Maybe like peanut butter, which is like really weird. But <laughs> <laughs> no, I got jokes. But I like it doesn't matter if we are – we could be digging a trench. My side of the trench is going to look ten times better than yours every single time. I will make sure of it. Like that's just that's just how I am. I hate losing. Yeah, you know most players and I, former player myself and coach. You know I hate losing also, but nobody has played football and went undefeated. Everybody has taken an L, even Tom Brady's and the Joe Montana's. Uh, tell these coaches a little bit about what how how do you handle a loss? How do you handle yourself and how do you prepare for the final week when you do take an L on a Friday night? You're cutting out a little bit, but I think yeah. I think it was, um, how, how do I handle a loss? Yes, yeah. All right. Well, obviously, losing is not fun. No one enjoys it. But, I mean, sometimes you got to take one on the chin. And you got to, you know, obviously, I don't know how they're going to do it this year with this whole corona stuff. But, I mean, when you're walking down that good game line, like, you you look every guy in the eye because they, they straight up beat you. Like, that's just how it is. And you got you to gotta take it on the chin. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, as we finish up here, uh, we talked about the elevator pitch. Uh, AJ, tell these college coaches why they should recruit you and what you're going to bring to the program. Um, I feel like I grow, not not just physically, but mentally as well. I grow on a rate that is just astronomical. I feel like I'm, I, I'll be, re I'd be ready to take on an offense. You know, after a year or two, I feel like I'd be able to understand what the goal is, what the mindset is what the culture of the team is. Um, definitely, I mean, I know it's super cliche for everybody to say, oh, I work the hardest, oh, I work the hardest. But I work the most consistently. I, I, I will not miss a single day. There might be days where I'm getting my butt kicked by the workout, but I, I'm not missing. I'm not going home. I'm not taking a sick day. It's not in my, not in my code. Good stuff. Well, AJ, I've enjoyed uh, interviewing you here. I've learned a lot about you. Uh, you've got great energy. You've got a plan. Uh, you're very mature at the quarterback position, which I know college coaches will love. I know you're going to have a great start to your senior year. I hope to be at a, at a game here pretty soon. Continue to be safe. Continue to work hard. And we'll see you on the, on the sidelines soon, okay? Yes, sir. Thank you very much, Coach. Hey, thank you for having Thanks for taking time out to be with us, and uh, have a great rest of your day. My pleasure. You have a great one.